You're listening to This Week in Property. Stay current, relevant and up to date in the world of property investment. Learn from the UK's leading property professionals and grow your property business. Hello and welcome to This Week in Property. I'm your host Richard Swan and in today's show we've not got one, we've got two fantastic guests for you. We've got a wee panel here. Absolutely brilliant. We have the lovely Laura Chapman from Chapman's Lettings over in Edinburgh. And we have Mark, the lovely Mark, I'll say that as well. Let's, let's <laughs> make it The lovely Mark Shanta from Shanta Lettings over in Glasgow. And as you can imagine from that introduction, we're going to be talking about this important part of the property world. The letting site, the long-term strategy, the, the buy to hold, you know, the buy to lets, the portfolios, all those buzzwords that you've heard of. So we're going to have a chat. Um, we're going to go into all the nitty gritty, we'll take the conversation wherever it goes to try and give you some value for preparing you for that part of the puzzle. Because you might be in property already, you may be just started, you're an accidental landlord with just one of them and you're not sure, am I doing this properly? Uh, should I really have a letting agent? The answer to that is yes, I'll tell you that one up front. Uh, or maybe you're just <laughs> thinking about it, you know, you're working away hard in your cubicle, you're listening to the podcast, you're thinking about diving into the property world and you want to get this small part of the puzzle, because it's a big giant puzzle, you want to get that ticked off. These are the experts that are going to help you do that. Oh, that's a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. <laughs> so let's get a wee introduction first anyway. So Laura, uh, met you before, we've had you mm -hmm. on This Week in Property actually a wee Indeed. while ago, yes, uh, which was great, uh, but now we've got you in person in mm -hmm. the office. Give us a wee introduction of your backstory. What kind of took you through the, you know, you must have woke up as a six-year-old and thought, <laughs> my dream is to become a letting agent, and then you forged your career. Is yeah. that how it went for you? Not, not quite, but not there was quite. an element of insanity in, in the whole thing. So I um, always grew up with property. My father was an estate agent. He bought right. and sold houses. And so property in the blood. Right. Um, and then went to university, and I actually got ME in my final year of uni. Mm. Couldn't walk, couldn't talk, but I could tap away on my computer wow. and uh, started looking for a property and at one point I had a grad offer I think it's from Marks and Spencers went to a mortgage broker and said I've seen a property I want to buy right. um, but I've got a job offer that starts in seven months time can you give me a mortgage and he's like yeah that was a time when mortgages were really easy to get like so I um, bought the property and then obviously I couldn't afford to live there because I couldn't even afford my student accommodation my final <laughs> year at uni um, so um, uh, rented out got the keys on the 28th of March right. rented out on the 29th totally illegal let it wasn't a short assured one so oh don't tell anyone um, and uh, and then yes yeah, someone was just moved in for, for five months whilst renovating their own home wow. and then uh, and then I moved in and then I moved in and out of that property it was my boomerang flat was it? Um, geared, uh, released some cash on it bought another property was in banking um, so I never even got the job I never even went to Marks and Spencers <laughs> um, and then um, yeah and then just grew my own portfolio but um, but working in banking chartered banker, so working with business owners, ah. um, and it got to the crash in about 2009, right. wasn't a great place to be, yes. um, and I thought, why not just do something by myself? So I left banking, worked with my husband, renovating kitchens and bathrooms, ah. so donned the steel toe cap work boots. Oh my um, goodness, I got you've high seen heels all on angles. Today. High heels are on, yes. Same and for then, me and Mark. Yeah. <laughs> That's and just then, the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then yeah, and then just set up the lettings like one one property by property, and then I bought wow. a small agency, which is obviously how I met yourself. Yes, that's um, right. And then I never looked back. So that was what nine years ago now. So wow. yeah, so that's my potted history. Does it feel like nine years? Or is it a blip? Is it just it a blur? It is a blur. But is I've had it? two children and moved house four times since then as See, well. So the whole thing. That's going to help. That's <laughs> yeah. really going to help. Brilliant. So, yeah. And for yourself, Mark, so how did that dream happen? Did we start out being an astronaut and then you just kind of shifted <laughs> oh. career? No. No. My, a bit of an interesting backstory for me. So I went to uni, did accounting finance at uni. Right. But the whole time I was at uni, I was playing online poker. So, I know. I, I bet you didn't expect this. Some dodgy I, backgrounds here. So I brought the right people onto this show. After after I graduated, I went to work for a company called Deloitte's. Oh yeah, year. I okay. went with them for a year as yeah. well. Yeah, and yeah. On the grad she... scheme, as an auditor, away, uh -huh. auditing the cows in the field and things like that. Work, not the accounting cows, but uh, no. I, I worked for a year as an, as an auditor, but the whole time I was playing online poker as a side, <laughs> and I was earning. I was earning really good money and one day I just decided to walk into the partner's office with my resignation wow. letter wow. and said Gosh. I'm going to go and do this professionally. Seven years later I, I played 
professionally for seven years. Wow. I'd, I'd built up a portfolio of 14 flats. Right, so would, fantastic. My kind of model was play poker online and then I was a bit of travel involved as well. Right. Earn a sum of money for a deposit, buy a property, refurbish it, rent it out and rinse and repeat. I kind of did. Oh, okay, just building two, those two blocks up year, one yeah. at a time. There, right, okay. We didn't ever, ref I didn't, there was never really a need to refinance and pull the money back out. That was right. kind of our, my model at the time. Right. So I built up a portfolio over that period. My first ever buy to let property. This is, you were mentioning about how easy it was for finance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I self-certified that mortgage as a professional gambler. Wow. Uh -huh. and, uh, yeah. And it's it, unbelievable compared to the hoops Jeez. you have to jump yeah. through now. These days. Uh, yeah. um, so seven years on, I built up that portfolio and I was looking after myself. Right. And a few friends were coming to me and saying, oh, could you manage, I know you're doing this, could you manage ours? I was like, yeah, okay, because there, was, there wasn't the regulations involved at the time where you of had course. to be a, a registered <coughs> letting mm -hmm. agent or mm -hmm. anything like that. Yes. I was like, yeah, I can do that. And then I had one poker playing friend who had a big some a big pot of money. He said, could you do for me what you did what for you yourself? Uh -huh. Copy that. So I said, right, no problem. So he bought we bought three flats for him and they were, they were just cash purchases. He refurb we refurbished them renting about, so he was kind of our first portfolio landlord. Mm -hmm. Then it got to the stage where we had about 20, my portfolio and the rest, uh -huh. and um, decided that to jack in the poker <laughs> and put an actual name to it. So we created wow. Chantaletten originally right. and started from my office uh, and at home. Oh, at home, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yep, yep. This was four years ago, started from our office start at home. A, a real lean startup, and then Slowly moved in, I went to hot desk for an, an, an estate agency. Mm -hmm. Then after about a year or two, or about 18 months, we, uh, in the office that we were hot desking, mm -hmm. we developed upstairs yep. and we moved in up there. Mm -hmm. So we started, we had our own office from there. And then at the start of January, uh, st start of the year this year in January, we took over that estate agency ah, so we offer okay. sales and lettings mm -hmm. now Tremendous. so mm -hmm. we've got the full building so we've got sales lettings and then it all just kind of has grown and it's just kind of grown how are you finding the sales going is it yeah different world is it hard is it easy is it just growing <sighs> at the pace you want it to it's if you i'll put it this way if you can do lettings you can do sales. you can do sales mm -hmm. yeah, right. without gotcha. a doubt gotcha. the, the lettings is a lot more labor intensive mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. and I've been used to over the years when we've built up our portfolio, developing the relationship mm -hmm. the, with the landlord. Mm -hmm. You know, right. you, you have the landlords for the last four or five years. Mm -hmm. You speak to them intermittently, tell them about the chain, tenant change over all the regulations. But with sales, it's basically take the property on, mm -hmm. agree the price, agree the price, and then really. There's not much interaction with just no, exactly. until then. Yeah, it's, it's a very like short lived relationship. It's yeah. more of a transactional yeah. It is more mm -hmm. of a transactional mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. So different but the two businesses work well uh -huh. together, sales mm -hmm. and lettings, because I know uh, we might go into it later, but we've had quite a lot of landlords this year that haven't been structured properly ah. and they've been needing to sell. Mm -hmm. And at least you've got a one-stop shop. Exactly. Yeah. We've been able oh, to do that on the way out. So. Mm -hmm. That's tremendous. Mm -hmm. So remember, tune in uh, soon for another episode where we'll have Mark on for the gambler's entry <laughs> into the property world. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> See the backstories. We well, well, everybody start free, somewhere. It, as well. tax gambling free. is tax-free. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I know. The part We're going to turn all your listeners off. They're going to move out yeah. of property and into gambling. Let's <laughs> no, go into this. It's much better. <laughs> the partner, when I went into Del Deloitte, to be fair to him, he looked to hand in my notice. He's like, what? See that again? Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I know it was a, it was a cal ca poker's more of a skill game than mm. it is gambling. It's not like roulette. Ah, it's, it's, a it's just a chance it thing. Is, it is, yeah, yeah. it's a skill oh, game that see. I've read up in the theory pre pretty well. as kind of an expert mm. in it. So are you now using it? this with your landlords for their their tails? Very <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good face. Uh, he thinks my services are too <laughs> too expensive. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I can see him. I can see his eyebrow moving. <laughs> That's a good skill to have. Yeah, absolutely. A good skill set. Tremendous. <laughs> right. Okay. So this this a uh, power team member, as we love to call them, mm. the letting agent. This mythical beast. Mm -hmm. This amazing character. So I was telling you earlier, actually, Laura, we were having a wee chat on the, one of the courses that we do in PMW is called Property Protege. Mm -hmm. 
and we teach a raft of people that are interested coming into the property world. And it's a brilliant moment. I love watching it from the back of the room because Paul himself, Paul McFadden, will stand at the front and he'll say, so hands up who's going to be building a portfolio for yourself or for, for other people, investors, and all these different hands go up. Because everyone gets in for different reasons, mm -hmm. you know, so it's excellent. Keep your hands up if you are going to be managing those properties yourself, you know. I mean, it might be you'll just do the first one yourself, you know, before you pass it on. And every, most times, hands will stay up, mm -hmm. especially when he says, just your first one, you know, just to get going. He tricks them. He tricks them every time. And then he just lambasts them all. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> Don't ever try and do this yourself. <laughs> If, if you take anything away from what we're teaching you, get the experts to do the right things. You know, stand mm -hmm. back, be the proper business owner. If you're serious, mm -hmm. that's why you're here. You know, mm -hmm. that's why you're doing this with us. Uh, you paid a lot of money to come in this course. You've got a plan to really be in this for the long term. This is not just, I'm going to get one bite of letting, that's me. Mm -hmm. If you're serious, do not ever try and do the letting side of this yourself. Mm -hmm. Get an agent mm -hmm. and then he actually praises you very high this is uncommon for Paul because he's, he's got some bad opinions of people in the proper world <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding but he'll actually say he says for me uh, the letting agent is the hardest working person in the property world he says the money you pay them it's just you could pay it four times over mm -hmm. you will never unless you make the mistake of actually trying it yourself mm -hmm. you'll never understand how much grief that they keep from your door mm -hmm. you know it's mm -hmm. just it's bonkers mm -hmm. and he can't actually work out why you two people are in this world <laughs> because he looks at the work that you do he's like oh i would never do that uh -huh. I, I think <laughs> so i mentioned i was play. insane at the beginning you are I insane say? yes, yes. Look at these, these troubled backgrounds I think, this to, is why. I think you have to enjoy people and working with people yeah, from yeah. all yeah. different mm -hmm. Like that's walks right. of life. That mm -hmm. that uh, that's a part that I actually enjoy the most is uh, it must working. Be. It must be. Yeah, working with people. But it's a funny one you mentioned that because we've had it where of some self managing mm. or some or some first time landlords are a year in and <laughs> you, you know, you take your percent your monthly commission yep. and it gets to down the line and they think, well, what are we actually uh -huh. paying you what for? Are you doing for your money? What are you doing for, yeah. what are you money doing for your for mm -hmm. What are you doing for yeah. your fee? The uh, rent's coming in. Yeah, I've not heard any problems. Uh -huh. There's yeah. not been any yeah. problems. The rent's yeah. coming in nice. This has been a doddle. And that's exactly what you're that's yeah. exactly yeah. what you're paying for. Yeah. To have everything set up properly, to deal with the, the things that they don't the noise they don't as we like to call and it. And the 3 a.m. wake yeah. up calls as well. Oh, you know, where, yes. uh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I want to hear those stories. <laughs> they delve into everything. I want your opinions, your experiences, the highs, the lows, you know, well, everything. It was interesting. Know? I once actually looked to, to try and really justify the, you know, my pricing and what mm -hmm. value I was offering. I sort of looked through it and I thought, right, if I was somebody doing this myself, I think I worked out that it's about 60 hours worth of work right. for a year. Right. And that's a smooth running tenancy. Now, that doesn't sound like a huge <laughs> amount. But then I was saying, well, look, if your hourly rate is maybe £50 an hour, it depends what you do in your you know, professional life and everything yeah. else. But you know, then you add that up and go, well, that's actually worth quite a lot of money. And yeah. it's, you know, so what you're paying us is a lot cheaper. Yep. But what it also does is it stops you having that distraction. It yes. takes that stress, stress away from Correct. you, which is really important. And it frees you up to then go on to do the next one or the next one, or it frees you up to spend time with your family or That's whatever that. it is. Yes. And it yes. stops you having the rent arrears, which yes. costs you money. It stops you having the problem tenants. You know, the maintenance is organized and, and dealt with really yep. efficiently. So you then don't have to do a rent rebate and things yep. like that. That's right. So it's quite interesting. You look at, okay, there's a a small monthly fee coming off, and God forbid you charge VAT. Um, <laughs> and um, but actually, you don't see what it's saving you and what yeah. it's freeing you up to do. And I think that is really important to understand yeah, that. And you can't totally. always get that across in your ten or twelve and a half percent margin. You know, no. whatever it is. No, and, exactly. Um, and it's not until you've done it yourself. You know, we've had landlords who come to us and um, they've taken the property back. Yeah. And then two years later, they went, this is what just hard work. They've, they've Can aged you please five take years. it back? Yeah, yeah. exactly. I exactly. can't do this. I yeah. hate property. Yeah. I hate tenants. <laughs> this I is think, terrible. I think as well, keep, keeping the void periods down yeah. is a big yeah. job of a, a, a big yeah. job. We were talking off here and Laura said, you were saying that you aim to keep it to four working, working days, days yeah. which is working tremendous. Days. Impressive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because... At the end of the day, if it was a self-managing landlord, oh, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't have that scope to get in to do the pre-inspection, mm -hmm. yep. to then do the checkout inspection. And the viewings. To, and the viewings. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. that's right. To arrange the, the clean-in-between times. Mm -hmm. It's yep. just, it, it's 
to try and keep the, that void period. The landlord might eventually get around to it, might yeah. take them three or four weeks to have, mm -hmm. and they might have a void of three or four weeks, yeah. in which case that They've could be... they paid for our fees anyway in that. That's it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That loss True. of rent, yeah. And That's equally now as well thing. with the new PRT, the, the private residential tenancy yes. regime, the turnaround's 28 days. You know, yes, you know, you're, if you're lucky, your tenant might give you more notice than that, but they only have to give you 28 days plus the 48 hours notice. And I swear, <laughs> every hour makes a difference, doesn't it? <laughs> every hour helps. <laughs> so, you know, your turnaround is really, really rapid because not only you've got to manage that tenant who's going through all the stress of moving out, packing up their boxes, the place mm -hmm. is not looking at its optimum because they've started to pack. Mm -hmm. You're trying to manage, you know, get it on the market as quickly as possible and get yeah. people in to see it at looking at its best mm -hmm. and then referencing them whilst managing that tenant to moving out, you know, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And then all the, you know, if there are any deposit disputes and those sorts of things, Exactly, you know, which are rumbling well. on after that. Drag on. Oh, Just, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Talking absolutely. about the 28-day uh -huh. notice period. So if, uh, people listening to podcasts might not realise that... This is Scotland, obviously, This is well, Scotland, yes. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a new tenancy regime that came in at the end of 2017 mm -hmm. called the Private Residential Tenancy. Yes. Where a tenant can hand in their notice being 28 days at any point. Mm -hmm. Previously, it was a short, short tenancy which you were fixed in for a period of time, minimal six months. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, and the notice period was two months. Mm -hmm. So you know the day, the day that you signed up for a tenant back in the day, you were getting, the tenancy agreement was yeah. going to be minimum yeah. for six yeah. months. Yeah, yeah. And you've got a nice block there. Mm -hmm. But now, yeah. going forward, it's the 28 days notice in the PRT. At any point. Ooh. At yeah. any point. Now, what's so, the views on that? What's the personal opinions on that? Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Is that a problematic thing? You know, just take yourself yeah. out of just being a letting agent. Mm -hmm. Just property it's, in general, the investor, gives, the landlord. It certainly the gives the mm -hmm. tenants a lot more flexibility. Yeah. And that they can move into a property and if they don't think that property's been presented to them the way that it was during the viewings or uh -huh. if they were having problem with it the letting agent or landlord, if they're having issues with the neighbour upstairs, the neighbour yeah, across exactly. the way, uh -huh. if there was damp, there was broken boiler, where the landlord's not doing the repairs, mm -hmm. they can just say, do you know mm -hmm. what, I'm fed up with this. Yeah. And I'm away. Yeah. But equally, I think there's, there's a bit of a downside because when anyone moves house, you know, you know moving house is one of the most stressful things you can do. Yeah. Um, aside from, I think, Which is why you've children. done it. Yeah, it's <laughs> far too many times, yeah. <laughs> And actually it's children. Masochist. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the problem is, because we do a lot with our tenants about managing your expectations. So like, guys, mm. look, when you move in, this is going to be really stressful for you. But yeah. also bear in mind that you might be moving from an old property to a new build. Mm. You might be moving to a property where the shower pressure is great in one property and not so in the other. You're going to have different neighbours. Yes. And I sometimes think the fact that there was a fixed period of six months made gave the tenants a vested interest to mm. give it a go because That's what i'm finding point. now is that it's so easy and so so simple for a tenant just to give their notice but they yeah. might just be swapping one set of problems for another exactly and it can al almost almost be like a, a gut reaction to say <laughs> i'm not happy here and i'm going to leave whereas yeah. i say well no moving home you've got to meet your neighbors go and knock on the door introduce yourself you know yes it's going to be different but you've got to try and embrace the changes yeah, you know get your feet under the table exa build yeah. up those relationships exactly you know? and just get used mm. to the fact that it might have different noises at night, you know, oh, and these yeah. sorts of things. And I think the fact that it's so easy for them to move on, mm -hmm. which I think is good for flexibility for jobs, you know, and everything right. else. And I think it's good also that once they've stayed for a long period of time, the landlord has to give them 84 days notice because, yes, you know, when you tenants are renting for much longer now, you know, and they're often building their homes, their families in rented accommodation. Mm -hmm. And I do think it's hard for them to suddenly have to, to move on with only two months notice and things like that, especially if they're moving from one, you know, children in schools mm -hmm. and these sorts mm. of things which you don't get as much in the city city center flats yeah so i do think it it is good but i just think yeah there's there's a there's a balance that needs needs to be struck and a lot uh -huh. of that comes down to you know your relationship when you when you meet the tenant when you're managing their expectations on the move mm. in you know once they've we, we do a six week settling in visit to say look guys you know there are going to be niggles when you move in yeah, you know but course. let's let's you know take a deep breath mm -hmm. embrace it you know, and then we'll meet up roughly six weeks, but sooner if you want to. And if there's right. any other niggles, we can kind of go yeah. through those with you right. and, and make sure that you're happy because we don't want these tenants moving in yeah. and moving out because and your land has got new marketing costs to pay, new referencing yeah. checks, because the tenants don't pay any fees yeah. these days. Mm. You know, so they've got much less, it's a very technical term, but stickiness to yeah. the property. Yeah. Um, so totally. we're doing, you know, we've got to do what we can to try and keep I, them committed. I think from the landlord's perspective, mm -hmm. not a lot has changed in terms of if they want to get their property back right. there's like there might be a perception out there 
that it's harder for a, a landlord to get their property back if they want to sell it or for whatever reason. Yeah. But it's not really the mm -hmm. case. Mm -hmm. For a landlord to give notice to get the property back is 28 days within the first six months and 84 days thereafter. Yep. And just about every ground that you can think of to get, mm -hmm. there's 18 grounds like that's mm -hmm. right, big to get the property yeah. back. And yeah. 28 days if it's a breach as well, yeah, potentially exactly. as well. Exactly, mm -hmm. so yeah. it, it is straightforward for them. The new, there was a wee bit of thinking out there that, oh, it's going to be harder for the landlords to get the property back. Yeah, Whereas before, there, wasn't there? Yeah, mm -hmm. when uh -huh. their tenancy expired in the si after the six months, they, they could hand in their notice two months prior, uh, and serve the notice two months prior, get Initiate. it back, no mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. But now it's it's just the same. Mm -hmm. You just but have to give a reason yeah. now, don't it's you? It's just got to be a reason. It yeah, can't be your face doesn't fit mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. the yeah. 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 But one thing that I would say is that um, it's down to the agent if they're managing it or the the landlord if they're managing it to be a lot more thorough with referencing mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. because right. you do get people trying to pull the wool over your eyes. Mm -hmm. You do get people who are coming up from, say, Manchester or London, just on a month contract, and they right. see a nice flat, yeah. and that nice flat is £750 a month, whereas mm -hmm. if they were go to go to a hotel, it's 100 quid a night, Airbnb, 80 mm -hmm. quid a night. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're thinking, right, well, what we'll do is we'll take out a tenancy agreement, mm -hmm. hand in notice after day one, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then we'll be out, and it's only going to be £750. Yep. Mm -hmm. right, gotcha. So it's down to you, or the agent, out there, to get the contracts, to go through the proper referencing mm -hmm. procedure to make sure mm -hmm. that this person's not just coming up to yeah. temp, that they're going to be here at full time. Gotcha. But things do happen. It's like, so we have, we've had tenants move into property and after a couple of months, they, spl they split up, mm -hmm. they sure. go their separate ways, can't mm -hmm. afford to keep it mm -hmm. themselves, hand in their notice and, and that sort of things are on foreseen and you, there's yeah, not a lot you can do about it, it yeah. mm -hmm. but we, a funny story is we did have somebody give us the dreaded notice the day that they moved in. Oh no. On the uh, day, on the day oh that they moved in. See this is what happens, oh, people need to hear this. I know, <laughs> an absolute beauty of a flat in the West End, uh -huh. nice big tenement flat. Oh well. And um, the, the guy and his family, he's a professor um, from Saudi Arabia, right. teaching it. Um, Glasgow University, uh -huh. and it's his wife and his daughter. It's a big tenement flat. Came to the viewing, loved it, everything great. Passed the reference and okay, arranged to move in, very pleasant. Came, collected the keys, went to the flat, um, had a look round, opened up the cupboard, and there was a big spider in the cupboard. Right. And the daughter has <coughs> arachnophobia. Oh, God. And I, oh, this, or so no. this is what he said. So, they did not. They didn't move in. Oh wow. my god! They literally jumped back in the taxi, or got a different taxi. Came to the office, gave us the keys back, no. and said, "That's us." That's I, ridiculous. I could one not. Spider. I could not believe. It. And then I was thinking, "Do you not get spiders in Saudi Arabia?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they, <laughs> but, but, wow. So and it's just a t wow. it's just a ten out flat, you know. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. Where did they move to? Because they're gonna get spiders everywhere. Exactly. I don't know. I know. I don't know. Like, yeah. It's like may, like maybe a, a nice a new build down at the harbour, I would guess. Uh -huh. but yeah. Who knows? But wow. it's just, and like that was a interesting phone call with we the had the landlord. Oh, God, so, so, so uh, you'll yeah. not believe this, but you know how your tenant moved in today? Well, they actually did move in, move in, but they're moving out, and it's just what so, a nightmare. Yeah, but we. It's just one of these things. Yeah. But, yeah. but so you, have know you added that to your reference sheet now? Yeah. Arachnophobia. <laughs> Any family members with arachnophobia? <laughs> the thing is, when the inventory was getting done, there was no mention of a spider in the inventory either. <laughs> just like, it wasn't the resident spider. What is going on? <laughs> I thought this was unfurnished. <laughs> I had a spider. Up. I know. So, Laurie, what were you going to say there? Sorry. Oh, it just went straight out of my mind, actually. Oh, no, oh, no, no. But actually, no. the other thing you have, to do, you have to be careful of, though, is um, there was actually a case that went through the first tier tribunal, which is the body right, now in Scotland. Well, if yeah, there is a so problem and you it said you don't you don't go to the courts anymore you go yes. to this tribunal and um there was um someone went to the tribunal i completely lost my track of thought actually i'm thinking, yeah. about, I'm thinking about spiders <laughs> oh, no. so they moved they moved into the property but they gave their notice i think a week later or, or right. a couple of days later 
Now in Scotland, you, if you take a deposit, which we strongly recommend, mm. and we take a month and a half's rent generally, um, you actually have to pay that deposit across to a tenancy deposit scheme. So it's yes. one of three approved schemes in Scotland and you physically move that deposit across. Yeah. And that sits there for the duration of the tenancy. And you have to do that within um, 30 working days, so it's six weeks. Well this tenant, it wasn't, wasn't us fortunately, but this tenant moved in and they actually moved out of the property before that six weeks was up. So the letting ah. agent um, just went, okay, well here's your deposit it back right. but they hadn't actually deposited with deposited it with the tenancy deposit scheme because they were like well you've moved out we've not even mm -hmm. reached the 30 working days yet okay. you know well interesting enough that tenant having moved in then given their notice to move out which obviously the landlord then has more marketing fees and everything else then went to the tribunal and said this agent never registered oh. Oh. the deposit oh. with a tenancy deposit scheme and in Scotland if you don't register that deposit with the tenancy deposit scheme and transfer the money across you can be fined or the landlord can be fined up, up to, to three, three times, times the yeah. value of the deposit yeah. which is paid to the tenant so in this situation the reality was is the tribunal found in the tenant's favour they said look it's very unfair we can see you've sent it back see why. and we're only going to fine you one month's rent but actually um, you need to pay one month's rent out to the tenant because you never actually complied with oh. the law of and registering and transferring deposit. that deposit within six wow. we six weeks of the tenancy start date. So it's it's really quite scary it's what quite could go wrong. Yeah. So that poor landlord, new marketing costs, lost the tenant, lost a month's yeah. rent, uh, or however much the deposit was, because you know yeah. if it was asked to be a month and a half. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, quite quite scary. Have you gone um, to the tribunal? Before. I've sat in, yeah, yeah, I've not been taken, fortunately, fortunately not been taken <laughs> to the tribunal <laughs> yeah, yeah. saying Drag this them. now. <laughs> <laughs> hold up, yeah. hold on the cold. But I sat in behind, yeah. I had uh, another agent who I knew well and he was going and I said, well, can I, you know, anyone can actually attend, you don't, yeah. you know, you That's don't have right. to have permission. Yeah. But I just went in and I knew the particular case, he'd given me the background and I wanted to see how it went. And it was quite, it was actually quite reassuring, it was quite... Was um, I mean, it was formal, but it was much less formal than the courts. You know, people just yeah. sat around a table. The jargon wasn't quite so scary and things we, like that. We went for a eviction. Okay. Right. And the process, my honest thoughts were, what the process when you got there was very smooth. Mm -hmm. But it was getting there. Mm. It took us nearly four months to That's actually get in yeah. front of the tribunal. Right. And then when we got in front of the tribunal, it was a open and shut case, we were, the, the tenant was getting evicted on the basis of, of rent arrears. Mm -hmm. um, it was, they, they gave the tenant 31 days to vacate. Mm -hmm. So right. it was four months to get there and then another 31 days after oh, that. Yeah. But just going in, I, I mean, it's great because it's free. Yep. It's yeah, free, so it's there's yeah. no cost. I met the landlords there. Mm -hmm. It's like going through airport security. So mm -hmm. you <laughs> walk in, it's like mobile phone and the, oh, the wee right, okay. and then they do your search. and. Um, oh, right, they didn't have that in Edinburgh. Yeah. There was something going, going on in Glasgow, is <laughs> it? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> 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 it's not <laughs> it's and, uh, like poker playing. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. we, uh, He's on the list. <laughs> so we went, and then they take you up to like a holding room. Right. And then you just wait, and we waited for 10 minutes, and we got heard. The tenants didn't actually... Mm -hmm. the, the tenants turn actually didn't turn up. Mm. But I was just like, I was thinking when I was there, if the tenants do are going to come, mm. are they going to bring them into the same room? Oh, and are we going to be sitting oh, in front face of them? Off. But they might have to, I don't <laughs> know, they must, have, they must have two, but yeah. that, the process when we were there was fine. Was it? It nice was fine, it was nice and smooth. Yep. But it, I don't know if, if it was just because at the start, we were, it was about a year ago when we mm -hmm. went, so it was kind of new mm. that the waiting time was. Yeah, I think they were massively understaffed. They totally started, underestimated yeah. the number of people who were going to take cases to the tribunal. And because yeah. it is free for access. Well, that's the thing, see, you know, you've removed an obstacle. Exactly. Yeah. And, mm. and I think also there's, there was a whole swathe of tenants who've actually um, gone to the tribunal about, the, about their tenants, about their deposits about not the being deposits. registered. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. before, I think you had to um, have a small claims action, which would have cost yes, a tenant money. Whereas now, they're, they're just going straight to the tribunal. So there's yeah. been quite a lot but, of... Which um, is good. Yeah, yeah. No, well, it enforces true. compliance with the yeah. schemes. Correct, yeah. correct. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know something? We Just during the start of this conversation, um, people are listening in, they've, they've twigged in it already. First year tribunals, 28 days notice, 84 days notice, list of options to remove yourself, problem tenants, tenant deposits schemes. This is why you yeah. need uh -huh. a letting agent. Yeah, uh -huh. This is it. Because <laughs> it's such a complicated, murky world that yeah. you could just get dragged everywhere. Yeah, and going back to the, the very important point that you made, Laura, was to be a business owner, to have the space in your head to actually sit above it all and go, right, 
Where am I going to invest in next? Mm -hmm. How's that property going? Let me look at my numbers. To do that, you need all this noise away from you. Well, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But you're never going that, to get anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. That, yeah, that, that's true. And you've not, it's not even touched on things like the safety certs and no, things like that. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Permissions for access. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But somebody, technically, some a landlord could do all that sort of stuff themselves. If they Good produce themselves a, te a checklist uh -huh. and then just work, and they they work through it, mm -hmm. but it's the sort of thing that a, an agent does day in, yeah. day out, and has exactly. the processes for. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. it is quicker. And you but stay ahead of yeah. these things. Well, it was, it was interesting. Back in um, February this mm -hmm. year, um, we were taking on some new properties, and I was saying to the electricians, I said, right, you know, we need to have these heat detector in the kitchen, smoke alarm in the hallway, another smoke alarm in your in your daylight communal living area, sitting room, um, and they have to be interlinked. Yeah. And I said, could you have a quote, please? But I want um, I want uh, wireless units, please, on the quote because we're not going to be letting it out until um, end of March or. or first of April, whenever it was, not mm. April Fool's. And um, so they said, well, well, no, we're going to send you a quote for, for wired, you know, interlink mains wired smoke alarms. I was like, no, 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 the legislation's changing. It's like, no, 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 it's not. I said, no, 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 it is. <laughs> and uh, I said, could you just give me the quote, you know, for the wireless ones? And yep. I said, because the technology's moved on so much now that we can do yes. wireless ones. And the quote's a couple of hundred pounds cheaper. And that's also that, there's no decorating, you know, because exactly they're literally wireless the with wireless. radio bases. You can stick why, them up. I think that's why they changed it. Because, yeah, because of the decorating costs they, and they stuff. Were no, the the technology. Corn, they, oh. technology they were going through the technology itself. They were going through cornicing as well. When they were interlinked mm. before, what they were doing were having to run. If you were if you weren't a top floor flat where you could drop the wires down, mm. you're ha you're having to go through cornices it's and walls. Uh -huh. yeah. Or cutting massive big squares out of the lard and plaster, yeah. uh -huh. two sections and you know fishing it through. You know. But it was really interesting though because the electricians then said, we're going to speak to Select, we're going to speak to um, NIC, EIC, their bodies, right. because we'd not heard this. And uh -huh. I said, well, I just happen to be on the Council of Letting Agents yeah, group see. and I'm where this is coming in and I yeah. know it has been approved, it's just that Select and NIC, EIC haven't yeah. actually been told it's yet. Not <laughs> into the, yeah, exactly. But, actually, but it's yeah, so no. important to stay ahead of game because I mean those particular landlords we took on, we probably saved them across the board about two thousand pounds because yeah. of the number that we were taking on. And um, and also it's just and also I think as well the technology in these um, in the battery life mm -hmm. on these wireless ones. That's Similar another to reason. The carbon monoxide yeah, ones. why why is they've been the, they've allowed the them. Perfect. Although I'm Perfect. not sure, I'm not convinced in these student flats where they're burning toast all the time and setting them off. They if they really will right. last, but apparently, apparently they will Stress last. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think that the electrician that we, the electricians that we deal with, think that if you've got a, if you've got a top floor flat in a house, it's still better to use hardwired oh, yeah. installs mm, because yeah. it's fuel safe. It's Absolutely. much safer. Right. It's that yeah. angle. Yeah. When you yeah. can get into the attic or you can lift up four boards and drop mm -hmm. it, as opposed yeah. mm -hmm. to use uh -huh. Absolutely. the radio frequency ones. And you can just replace the heads when they expire. Exactly. You know, all yes. the technology is so still in place, that, isn't that's it? That's the kind of way that we are going. The gold's the yeah. for, uh -huh. for, nah, Horses for courses. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It work? just depends yep. flat by property by property, but mm -hmm. probably say about eighty percent of them now are wireless. Yeah. Totally. I love it. But there you go. Again, examples. The knowledge, uh, being ahead of the game, preparing, being able to analyse a property. Oh, we're going to do this one differently because we can just drop the wires down. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. going to do this one differently because we're not going to damage the cornice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. That's why you need that expert. That's why you need that power team member. Yeah, and don't even so, talk about legionnaires. <laughs> oh, God. No, we, we need to. We need to get there. Actually, you want that. So, <laughs> no, <we're okay. laughs> so that person, this agent. So folks listening in, watching in, uh, if they're getting a place in Edinburgh, go to Laura. If they're a place in Glasgow, go to Mark. But they might be elsewhere. You know, might be getting a place in Blackpool, Blantyre, who knows, elsewhere. What should go through their head if they're a landlord or an investor when they're finding an agent? What kind of things do you think would be key finding an agent? They might mm -hmm. be down in Southampton I, or somewhere yeah. else or Aberdeen, would, you know. Mm -hmm. If you don't, What's the thing I, would you would ask, off? I would ask for recommendations. Right. Number Get one. That human so if, thing if you're first down south and you... Ask for recommendations, then do your due, due diligence. Mm -hmm. like, and what do we mean so, by that? Because oh, they I mean, understand it, it, property, they understand right, just type the them values. In, type them into Google. Right. Look them up on if they're on social media. Look them up on Facebook, and just find out. Try and find out about the company. The story behind how if big you, they are, oh, how yeah. established, this mm -hmm. kind of thing. Give yeah. them a call. Drop uh -huh. them an email. See how quickly they are to respond to you if you're right. Um, and yeah. 
Set okay. them some sample questions as well, so you can compare yeah. apples with apples. So you ask the same agents the same questions, what uh, responses like do you get? Uh -huh. But I think in Scotland as well, I mean, a letting agent now has to be registered with the Scottish Government. Yes. So we need what's called a LAN number, which is a letting agent registration number. So you yeah. need to make sure that they've got that. So they can ask um, them that. Have on they got the phone. client money protection insurance? Do they operate right. with a separate client account? Yes. You know, um, what is so that? So CPMS, their? so that was in, in April? Was it uh, April And they started really making it a, a fundamental thing with the, the letting agents and the management. 31st of January 2018 was 18, the code of practice yeah. came in. Uh -huh. um, and then you had the compliance through, it was October was the end date last year, wasn't it, to have everything in That's, place. Yeah. But there's still some agents who and have, it, to be fair in their defence, they have put in their application to the government to get their LAN number. Uh -huh. But there's been such a big backlog. But there's, there are a lot out there who aren't operating yes. uh, in the right way. So uh -huh. in, in, certainly in, in Scotland, so it's, Scotland, it's much more highly regulated. Got that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think and I think it's going that way in England. I think because housing is a devolved issue in Scotland, yes. I think a lot of the things that we do in Scotland, it just slowly follows through exactly. you know, down south. In fact, that's what so it is. You've now connected the dots for me. Because down in England, they released it through the government site in April this right. year, okay. making yeah. it you know yeah. a necessary for yeah. those two groups of people, for the, the letting agents and for the ones they call property yeah. management agents right. type okay. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so explain that then. So CPMS, yeah. this protect... Why? What is this? What, so what does that so do? basically what you need to have is you need to have your client's money going into a separate account. Mm -hmm. So any rent that's paid doesn't belong to the agency, it belongs yeah. to all those different landlords um, yeah. in, in the portfolio. And that needs to be left separate. So if, God forbid, something happens to the letting agency, yes. they, they go bust, insolvent, whatever the issue is, effectively on the date they go bust, that that, that client that's account can be frozen right and, and, and the funds are, are set, you know, are, are Ring fenced so for, for for the landlord. Obviously, you know, right. an element of mismanagement could be going on, but most you yeah. know, most letting agents would reconcile their client account, mm -hmm. you know, on a daily basis to make sure, you know, all the all the dots add up, you know, it reconciles us to the penny. Yes. So um so it's always a good idea to make sure you, you know in, and you can't get client money protection insurance, I don't think, unless you've with got it. a client account. Yeah. To begin so with, you know, get a copy, yeah. get a copy so of their CMP that. insurance. Right. Um so that's probably another another box to tick, that's whether you're in one. England, Wales or in I, or in Scotland. I think an interesting one that I see quite a lot as well is ask on a, a local forum, like on the Facebook forum. Mm -hmm. oh, so if yeah. you live in Shawlands uh -huh. and you're a member of a Shawlands group, uh -huh. just pop in. And a lot of the time, what you'll find is it'll be ex-tenants will write up either good mm -hmm. or bad reviews. Ah, so right. you're actually mm -hmm. getting okay. it from the perspective of a Consumer. tenant yeah. as well yeah. as the, yeah. the landlord. As, as a landlord, yeah. that's my customer, yeah. isn't it? That's yeah. who I, I want to stay yeah. with me. Although mm. you do need to take it with a pinch of salt sometimes as well, sure. because if you look, go and Google us now, we've got the most hideous review on our website oh, no. um, from a tenant who, I won't obviously make, make, name names, I'm yeah. not allowed to, I think he could, but we're not allowed to. Right. Um, and he left this property in a absolute pigsty. Um, very unpleasant person to deal with and work with and everything else. Um, and in that situation, he was going to lose his entire deposit. Uh, you know, and, and so you are always going to get someone, a tenant yeah. who is disgruntled. Because at the end of the day, as a, as a letting agent, you're, you're working for the landlord because without your landlord, mm -hmm. you know, your business doesn't exist. Yeah. But you've also got the very challenging um, uh, job of, of managing your tenant's expectation. Yeah. You might also have a tricky property. And you might as have a well, tricky landlord right. as well. There's and it's about, and if you get all pieces. three, you're like, oh no, oh, <laughs> I'm not going to work a today. Bad landlord, <laughs> yeah. a bad tenant, and a, a bad property. property. Oh, no. uh, you know, like a property that, you know, there's always something <coughs> breaking with it or, you know, whatever it is. So, yeah. so one of our, our, our jobs, our, probably our, our most difficult job, is trying to get all three parts of this, of this business sure. meeting up. And one of the things we do a lot with our tenants is, is we don't want our tenants to feel sorry for our landlords in any way, but we say, look, guys, you know, we've got to make this relationship work. Mm -hmm. We're stuck in the middle here, yeah. you know you're wanting all of these things so when you move in for example can you come back to us you know, you've got to come back to us about the inventory to confirm if you're happy with it yes but yes. equally if you've got any requests can you come back to us in one go don't drip feed yeah. all your requests oh, day by day by right, day gotcha, gotcha. because if day by day by day we're sending these on to the landlord the landlord's gonna go oh my god these tenants are so demanding I'm just gonna say no to everything That's right. but equally we say to our tenants look if there's something minor mm -hmm. can we try and fix it over the phone mm -hmm. you know can we work together to try and sort that out because mm -hmm. a you're gonna get your problems sorted sooner and you're gonna get on with enjoying your life much sooner and you get your shower quicker because you've helped top up your own boiler pressure you know and exactly. things like that the simple stuff, but equally, the low hanging fruit. exactly yeah. but we've kept the cost down 
for the landlord yeah. so our landlord remains more profitable yeah. you know and everybody's happy and we'll say to the tenant look when we do our rent reviews mm -hmm. we'll say to your landlord look you guys these guys are great tenants yes, uh, are we ones. don't want to lose them yeah. let's not be too aggressive on the rent increase here yes. That's you a know point. so we just so we work really 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 hard on getting that communication right and mm -hmm. um, and it's just it's a constant constant thing but we have a thing up saying help the tenants help themselves you know and working uh, in partnership yeah, yeah. because that's what we're doing because actually we don't exist without all three parts of the equation yeah. um, and it's so a, that's it's a very good way of yeah, analyzing that I yeah. like that so again yeah. maybe a question saying you know what agent to use is how do they treat their tenants uh -huh. how do they talk about their tenants uh -huh. you know if they talk about their tenants as just being a pain in the backside mm, well that's probably numbers, not, just, not yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um, and it's yes you don't want to be have problems with your tenants but you need those solutions coming yes. you know and yes. um, so that's probably another and so another could question. we ask an agent that you're for up in Aberdeen or whatever so how would you deal with a situation where they don't pay on time can we ask an agent that to try yeah. and gather how they work really absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Ask them how they report repairs. Yeah, it's a difficult mm. question, that one as well. The, well, exactly. The, the yeah. question about um, rent is a difficult, because it, it is case by case on how yes. you go, well, how we go about chasing the, the arrears. Mm -hmm. Like, we phone, text, email, keep everything official, and then we feed that back to the landlord and let them know this is what they're saying, or they genuinely have, they're away on holiday this week and they forgot to make their payment or you know they've lost their job but it's not looking good so it just depends on how to respond to every situation mm -hmm. managing repairs is a quite a key one as well mm -hmm. as you were saying because i think you should the landlord should really know what a kind of a general call out will be for each of the right. contractors mm -hmm. whatever the thing yep. is it's plumbing it's electrics exactly. right and how out of office emergencies are handled and as well. Going to be mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good point. That is yes. key. It's like because the agencies shut half five six. Mm -hmm. If you if you're a, in winter and your boiler breaks down, and you're a family and mm -hmm. you know that is an emergency. So yeah. how's that going to be dealt with, and mm -hmm. what is the cost? So you know these sort of things find out. Uh -huh. A lot of the time, the first thing that I don't know if you'll find this as well. We get asked is first question. What's your price? Which <laughs> just, mm -hmm. And I think that's probably the I think that's God. probably the wrong question. Uh -huh. That shows you when yeah. the, the mindset uh -huh. is all wrong. Yeah. I think that's They're probably the wrong this question. As a cost, yeah. Whereas it's an investment. Absolutely. You're investing uh -huh. to take the noise away from yeah. you. You're yeah. mm -hmm. investing to take the worst. If we get a call at the office, mm -hmm. the first question is, oh, "I'm just going to see what your prices are for yeah. management," and we put all of our prices on the website on anyway. The anyway, right? Um, just just an extra kind of level of. Transparency. Transparency. It's mm -hmm. there. It's yeah. not like we're going to go out and say, like, like we might be able to get an extra 1% here or an go. extra 10 <laughs> pound. They're there. But when I get asked that, I try and find out a bit more about the property mm -hmm. first. And, gotcha. you know, I just, you, you just want to know, get the details, mm -hmm. because you want to enter into that conversation. You don't want to say, right, here we are, we're 10% plus fat, and then they're like, oh, thanks for calling. Yeah, and then yeah. exactly. they're away to phone the next person, and somebody says, oh, they up the road said they, you yeah. know, and it's about kind of, I think that's the worst thing to do is ask uh, to ask shop price. on price. Yeah, because yeah. no. you're not seeing, you know, uh, what what sort of rent levels do you get? What's your occupancy rate? Yeah. What's your rent? Yes. You know, what you know, I, you, have you got any rent arrears across your portfolio? Yeah. Yeah. You know, those are the questions. What's your tenant satisfaction levels like? What you know, what's the void? What's the yeah. gap between tenancies? You know, those sorts of things. Because all those things are money. Yeah. So if, exactly. if you've if you've yeah. started that first question yeah. trying to talk about money, but yeah. you've, you've missed all this yeah. other money. Absolutely, so it's wrong. And also, I think to, to uh, the I I, I personally. I think um, a good agent is one that will interview the potential landlord as well. Right. So we do quite yeah. a lot of switcher landlords, so landlords who are moving from another agency to right. us. And um, so I interview them. And mm -hmm. I had, it was so, so funny, I had someone walking off the street the other day and we, we chatted for a bit. Uh -huh. And then he came back in with his wife and, and interviewed me. Right. And he said, well, great, I want to sign up with you. And I said, well, that's fantastic. Um, but tell you what I want to do is I want to come and meet you at the property. Right. Um, and they went, oh. I said, well, yeah, because I want to see what kind of property I'm taking on here and what kind yeah. of landlords you are because you've told me you've had all of these problems. Yes. A, I don't want you jumping out of the frying pan into the fire because are your expectations just completely wrong? Exactly. Um, but equally, I want to go, is this is this a problem property that I'm going to be mm. taking on? Yeah. And he was like, oh. Yeah. And, and it was so funny because we went out to see the property and he got all the keys wrong. He didn't have the right keys. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, that's another reason to use an agent. Uh, well, no, <laughs> I didn't even get in. <laughs> 
Oh my um, God. So I think that is important because yes. it's a relationship and your, your agent is managing your most valuable asset, probably Correct. one of your most valuable, maybe Correct. your most highly geared asset, um, and it, but they're also providing a home yeah. for somebody. So I think it is really important that you see the whites of the eyes, you get yeah. to meet them, you get a sense of what they're like and their level of professionalism, and also for the agent to get a sense of, is this gonna be a professional yeah. landlord? Well, mm. Sometimes the, the, yeah. the landlords come in from other agencies. I don't see that a lot of the time the other agencies have done much Mm -hmm. not been the it problem. seems mm -hmm. to be the problem. Yeah. There's There's another common denominator. Yeah. Yeah. They're not doing this, yeah. they're not doing that. And I'm yeah. like, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't I, either. Oh, yeah. I know. So, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. Speak, don't, not all, from our p perspective, not all business is good business. And yeah, yeah. Absolutely. it's not a numbers game. Yeah. No, it's exactly. Just a, you know, yes. I think that's a, a lesson in business that we, you, you, you do learn. It's yeah. like at the start when you're trying, oh, you're, you're focusing on growth and things like that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And now it's a lot easier to just say, no, mm -hmm. actually, you know, no. It's not, actually yeah. not, uh, yeah. it's not viable, it's not going to work. Yeah. And I think it's quite the, the new code of practice that's come out in Scotland, I think is really right. good. Right, need to jump into that as well, yes. <laughs> but I think yeah. the, the good thing about that is, is it gives um, letting agents a very, very strict framework in how they can operate because you can now take a letting agent to the first tier tribunal if they've that's done something right. wrong. Uh -huh. But equally, if you've got a client and landlord who says, well, I don't want to do that check, I don't want to do that safety check, you're like, well, I'm sorry. I yeah. can't work for you. Yeah, I'm That's not it. licensed. I'll lose my license if I do this. You know, I I can't do that for you. So yeah. I think I think things like that, although maybe a wee bit of a headache, a bit more bureaucracy, a lot more boxes to tick. Mm -hmm. I think it's driving up standards the quality. It, across across yeah. the nation. Yeah, definitely. So in, a in a service delivery, mm -hmm. and there's a lot more, hopefully, a lot more consistency on the level of service, which I think mm -hmm. then landlords will start to realise. Oh wow. I actually know I'm paying for a really professional service here because we've got a couple of um, solicitor clients in, in Edinburgh. They're like, we do not want to register with the Scottish government and go through all this um, training and all these qualifications <laughs> exactly. to, be, to, to provide a small amount of advice when it comes to lettings. And so they just refer everything to us because Brilliant. they know that you know we're doing it properly. And they also, they also know from our client's point of view, your hourly rate, Laura, is a lot less than our hourly <laughs> <They're> rate. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, maybe I should review that. Yeah, I'm back to you now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a solicitor when I grow up. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. so Excellent. it's a lot more professionalism. Yes, because I, I, actually I remember actually because uh, obviously as I've said to, to the viewers and stuff, we know you guys, we've worked with you guys and we've actually personally had different properties across our portfolios invested with you and I remember things like the, the sheet that you send out which has got different uh, questions about the property and mm -hmm. you're right nitty gritty, you know, mm -hmm. what about this, how's that, oh my goodness, what is that <laughs> totally different level, uh -huh. whereas in the past we've had a lot of agents that just dangle mm. that yeah. like, I'm really cheap okay yeah. and sign here and you know it's just it's not it's you can see it the service like, is like not the, the same clock. where's that in yeah. the property these simple so that things if a tenant phones in and says it's not actually happened to us before but I'm sure it will mm -hmm. one day mm -hmm. tenant phones in and says there's a there's a massive leak the pipes burst yeah you're able to say oh well go to the the bedroom cupboard there's, there's yeah. where the stop clock is and yeah if Absolutely. you have that information, you can put it onto yeah. your software. Yes. Yeah. And we usually show that to them when check-in as well. Do you remember a, when you went to check-in, we showed you yeah. where that stopcock was. Yeah. There are still, I think we've got about two properties where we still haven't actually found this stopcock. <laughs> <Is that right>? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody <laughs> knows where it is. So we're just hoping like that hell. That's not the part of the pipe <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, Landlord, nice. take out good cover. <laughs> <laughs> you want a mild winter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Right, okay. So we, we think we've got the agent. Uh, if it's you guys, Glasgow and Edinburgh, we're covered there. Elsewhere, find the right agent, yeah. do those checks we spoke yeah. about. Brilliant. So let's prepare ourselves then, that, that landlord, prepare ourselves for coming to work with you. What do we need to think about? What does that person need to think about from the perspective of coming as the person, Mark? So if I'm coming to you as a landlord, what kind of things should I have ready? Is there, is there checks? Is there ID stuff? What, what's required from that oh, so if you're if you're coming to me and say, oh, we're wanting to give you this yeah. property, yeah. well, proof that you own the property mm -hmm. right. and ID. We've got ID yeah. and mm -hmm. proof of we're connected yeah. with so it. So you're okay, not just okay. Joe Blogs off the street saying that just trying I own this property place. down the road. Honest. I'm yeah. <laughs> not suggesting and that no. can harm. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But there is a checklist uh, right. that you follow. So basically, in re start right at the top, register as a landlord. Mm -hmm. Right. 
That's a great thing that, to dive into a, as well. Because I'm trying to yeah. play completely dumb here, yeah. you know, because there'll be people listening in, they want to jump mm-hmm. into the world, but, mm-hmm. but what would they do? I guess they become that, a that's, a, that's after you've, that's basically after you've instructed us to right. take the property on. We'll walk you through how you You'll register. Guide them. So register as a landlord, right. make sure you've got the right lending. So if you're on it, it just depends if that's you're, great yeah, point. if yeah. you're a, if you bought it in cash, then no problem. Yeah. If you if you're a landlord who's lived in the property before and's got a residential mortgage, yep. you need to get that changed across to buy to let mortgage or uh-huh. get consent to mm-hmm. let. Or at least get the approval. Yeah. Yep. We've only ever had one landlord not be able to get consent to let. Is before. that right? Yeah, only yeah. ever one. Um, and that was because he was previously on a help to buy scheme. Ah, so right, I don't know okay. if you've had experience oh, with no, that before. No, no. But they said no. The lender um, just decided. They just said no. Fair and enough. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess fair enough. So you ended up selling it, but um, make sure that you're able to get that consent to let or or change your product across to buy to let mm-hmm. as well. Um, mm-hmm. And then you just work through the rest. Insurance. Okay. Insurance. Yes. Safety certificates. Mm-hmm. You're right. All that stuff. Keys, yeah, because yeah, Laura, I want, want you to think okay. about what do I need to come to you with from the property perspective, yeah. right? We'll jump into mm-hmm. that. But Martin, just finishing what you were saying about these people need to be registered as landlords. Yeah. So they, where's that with then? Does it depend on the areas that they're in, first of all? Is it just one, one so agency it, it they used to be d- They used to be split up, mm-hmm. but it's not anymore. So you just you need to register as with the Scottish Association. No. Landlord registration. The landlord Scotland. registration. Yeah. Scotland. Yeah. Uh-huh. You, need to, you need to register with them as a so landlord. Yeah. But then you need to register per each additional property. Yeah, on. so they've got so to know that as you well. You can't just be a landlord in Glasgow. Just and a have, landlord. Just <laughs> a, a landlord in Glasgow. And you can't, we've dealt with it recently, you can't just because you have one property, you need to add that extra property mm-hmm. on and you need That's to add right. individually. Individually. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. And perfect. you have to renew it every three years as well. Yes. So Otherwise you, you pay a late cancellation fee. As many gold yeah. they, will contact, they will contact mm-hmm. them directly yes. to say you're, ex- you're expiring in a month's time. This is coming up. You need to do that. Yeah. So it's on the land or And yeah. rough costs and stuff for this registration. £55. Pounds. Right about that, Mark. Yeah, it's, just, oh, it's just gone up, hasn't it? Or is it going up this autumn? Yeah, I think it's at 80 now, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. But that's actually another good point though is think about your email address. It sounds like a really silly yeah. thing. No. But yes. actually, you know, if you're gonna have your renewals sent to a certain email address, yep. don't set up a random you know, make sure you've got your property email address that yep. you're always gonna keep it valid and open keep and live. On because otherwise yeah. it yeah. might expire. You're gonna yeah. miss that. And then you get late, either you're acting illegally yes. um, or you then get late payment fees when you come to renewal. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. So get so. the business set up properly. Simple yeah. things like emails. Yeah. So you've got your eyes on the problems and stuff. Absolutely. So the property, so I'm a landlord, okay. I'm coming to you, I've done yep. my checks, I've brought that, there's yep. my ED stuff. Yep. What else do I need to, to come so, to you with? I mean, to be honest, we'll do it all for you, but what yeah. you need is you need an energy performance certificate. Right. So you, in Scotland, you usually get it part of your home report. Home so report. you probably don't have to pay for it. We can just download it. Although yes. there's new EPC minimum ratings coming in, but that's that's next year. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, you need to have what's called an EICR, Electrical Installation Condition Report. So that's a report on your fixed wiring around your property. Yeah. I always call it your hidden stuff behind your sockets and your plugs, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that, an electrician will come in and do that and do a random check of roughly 20% to 30% of the property. Mm-hmm. If it's all fine, he'll give you a satisfactory report, usually valid for five years, no five more. Years for that one, um, yeah. But if there are any issues, I'll say you need to do some remedial works. If you do the remedial works, you put the minor work certificate mm-hmm. with your unsatisfactory EICR, and boom, you're fine. You've got usually again for five years. Okay. You need to have a Legionella risk assessment, so that's right. checking your water. Um, the, the temperature, the flow, and the quality of the of the water in the property. Uh-huh. You don't actually have to check your water, but it's no, checking no, it's is it kept at the right that temperature is, that's and things like that. Push back on. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. As, as the Legionella yeah. risk assessment. Mm-hmm. What, what, what do I need that for? Yeah. And you're like, yeah. You Landlord, just let's just say um, box. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, cost wise, yeah. and how long does it last for for the Legionella? Oh, Legion- well, that's a really interesting one. So I spent a week going through the HSC, the Health and Safety Executive <laughs> website, because <laughs> I am that sad, um, <laughs> and to do my own flow chart. Because there's an awful lot of people out there who are making it all grow arms and legs, not just bacteria ah, growing arms and legs. Um, and some people are saying, oh no, if you've got a tank in the property, that's high risk. You need to have a combi boiler. And I was like, no, that's not that's true. Right, that's right. The, the HSC says there needs to be a risk assessment done, and yes. then sensible control measures put 
it in place. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say there's a pass or a fail. It's not like yeah. your portable appliance test where something just has failed. Yeah. You know, it's about using, it's an assessment of risk and then it's ongoing monitoring. Mm -hmm. So it really just depends. But if you have a property that say has a, has a combi boiler, the temperature is great. It's either lovely and lovely cold or lovely and lovely hot. Um, and the water, and it's not too many bathrooms and the water's mm. flowing regularly and there aren't any what we call dead legs. So bits of pipe where the water's sitting. Yeah, it's just in Then off. that's really low uh -huh. risk. So actually we do, um, we do a sense check um, a refresh of that each year or at change of tenancy. So if you have a slightly different tenant profile coming in, someone mm. with emphysema, a really young baby or something like that, we might then do another little sense check of it. Ah, but okay. we wouldn't necessarily go out and test the water or anything like that. Uh -huh. But if you had a property that has um, a massive, um, a really large tank that's maybe too large for the usage in the property that's got eight bathrooms, mm. um, that is not a properly lagged tank, all these sorts of things, A, you would do remedial work to lag the tanks and these sorts of things to make sure the temperature is kept at the right temperature. Yeah. But you might do extra check. If it's an old tank and it's slightly corroded, we might want to get that inspected each year or something like that. So right. a lot of it just depends on what the initial inspection is. Uh -huh. Again, if you then end up putting in another bathroom, you change your water supply somehow yes. in the property, you'd get that checked. But I mean, we've got some rural properties with wells and oh, all yeah. sorts and oh, they, yeah, community supplies wells. and all sorts. So yeah, it's an absolute oh, headache. Um, but that's that's more of an E. coli and an arsenic risk, not a Legionella one. Oh, so, yeah, um, so yeah, so you do your, Legion your, Le your Legionnaires and so there's no set there is, should should not be a set and criteria when you get it refreshed. Yeah. The, the word thing is it's to be conducted by a responsible person. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So who's a responsible Who is person? Yeah. The, the, a lot of the times the landlords can say if they wanted to, well, I'm a responsible mm -hmm. person. Yeah. I'll go around and sign yeah. this property off yeah. myself. So right. you don't need your NIC, EIC approval or if select, you're an electrician yeah. or yeah. your yeah. gas safety for a gas. But for the cost, it's just worth Taking that liability away, Put, exactly. Yeah. Putting it on yeah. the professionals, yeah. just yeah. Yeah. Box, yeah. move on, exactly. yeah. keep life simple. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. If you're looking to do that, yeah. you're shaving stuff in the wrong yeah. places. Yeah. You know, just yeah. like asking a lighting agent, mm -hmm. what, what's your fees? Yeah. No, you're not looking at this problem properly yeah. at all. Right, okay. The other few and the things gas just, so yeah, your, your well. portable appliance tests, yep. your gas safety checks, you need a carbon monoxide alarm, maybe one or two, depending on where all your flues go. So if you've got an internal flue, yep. you must have an access hatch in every room and you must have a, a CO alarm in each room where the flue runs through. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, PAC, gas, EPC, EICR, um, LRA, Legionella <laughs> Risk Assessment. VIP, yeah. NIA, <laughs> MRI. <laughs> <laughs> and a cat stand to check you is absolutely oh, sane here. So, so and all of those, yeah, yeah. but they're all repeated. Some every yeah. year, some every three years, every five years, yeah. every ten years. So it just depends. But you're a good agent. We'll just com com exactly. keep control of that. You've got the systems for that. You're that's where you rely that. on as yeah. an agent. Yes. Your software. You Get put it. that into your software. Yeah. You get a reminder a month before it's due to yeah. expire. Yeah. Simple. Let's go so yeah. jump into action. You're not yeah. thinking oh that must be the gas set running out in a few weeks or anything like that. It's yeah. just there. Yeah. And yeah. the work order, ping the work order, takes a minute out yeah. to the gas engineer and that's it. Mm -hmm. Done. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Yeah. Now you touched upon the, the tenancy deposit, so we'll mm. make sure we've got people uh, understanding that part of the puzzle. So yes, the, a tenant will pay rent every month. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. That's why we're in this game. But at the start, we're actually asking for a deposit. Mm -hmm. So let's put people's kind of thoughts around that one. Should we always ask for one? What's your kind of guidelines on that? And then what's the rules around where it should be placed? Could you okay. touch the wee bit on yeah. that one, Laura? No, absolutely. So mm -hmm. I would always recommend taking a deposit. I yeah. just think it would be crazy not to. But there yeah. are agents who recommend no deposit and they think yeah. oh, we can get a bit of extra rent uh -huh. you know it's a lot of money for a tenant to find mm. so you know, you're in Scotland you're allowed to take up a maximum of two months rent right, as the equivalent in deposit okay, we take a month and a half whether it's furnished or not and we also take our rent in advance so right. a tenant coming with Chapman's has to find at least two and a half months rent equivalently right. before they actually get the key Gotcha. Because it's one and a half months rent deposit and the first month's rent up front. Mm -hmm. So that ticks a lot of boxes to say, you know, do, do, does this tenant not only, can they not only afford to rent this property, mm. but are they a prudent tenant? Have they got savings put aside yeah. for something like this? It's speaking volumes about them, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. But then what happens is as well is you need to have a really good deposit clause in your lease. Mm -hmm. And your second most important document is your inventory, which is your right. snapshot record of your moving condition, contents, cleanliness and smell of the property when your tenants move in. Mm -hmm. Because what then happens at the end of the tenancy, and again, I think in England and Wales, you can actually either physically transfer the deposit to a tenancy deposit scheme, or you can get insurance backed policy yep. um, down south. But in Scotland, you, you physically move it across. Now, at the end of the tenancy, 
the deposit schemes work on the basis, they work on the premise that that deposit belongs to the tenant mm -hmm. unless the landlord or the agent can prove otherwise. Yeah. So therefore there's a huge amount of responsibility on the agent or the landlord to prove those dilapidations or to prove that rent arrears and things yeah. like that. First of all, the scheme will look at your deposit clause and saying, well, you're asking to get money back for unpaid rent, damage and cleaning. Mm. Well, do you have, your deposit could be used for rent arrears, deposit right. cleaning. So it has to be in your deposit clause. Gotcha. So I've seen deposit clause going from this size to this really? size um, to make sure everything is covered for every eventuality. <laughs> um, and um, so first, so, so the scheme work on that basis that, you know, first of all, is it, are you allowed to deduct for it? Has, right. your, has your lease provided for you to deduct for this? And then they'll say, okay, so what's the evidence? Mm. Have you got a good check-in inventory? Yeah. Have you got a good check-out inspection report? Have you got photographs? Have you got um, the written word? Now, a lot of people say, oh, I've done videos and things like that. Well, the adjudication work on a paper-based exercise. They're not going to scroll through hours of video no. and things like that. And they'll work, you know, the written word is probably the most and important. And it needs to be mm. in the software that does these inven inventories. Now, the inventory is about, 50, 60 pages, there's like over 100 photographs in mm -hmm. it. Right. Every single page, you get a tenant, you get a signature from the tenant, mm -hmm. you get a date from the tenant, it populates on every single page. Right. It's all done via software. Gotcha. So that every page is signed and dated by the tenant. Mm -hmm. To prove so they've got it. To, yeah. to prove yeah. that they Brilliant. agree with that inventory. Uh -huh. Whereas if you're sitting down in front of the tribunal and say, look, here's the photographs at the start of the, the uh -huh. tenancy, the person looking at them is thinking, well, oh, there's no date in this. Uh -huh. There's no sign from the tenant saying that they've seen these. Yeah. These photographs could have been taken mm -hmm. five years ago. Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. So there's been a few properties come across from us, from different agencies, where there's not been an inventory done. Mm -hmm. And at the end right. of the day, if the, if the rent is up to date, then the deposit just goes straight back mm -hmm. to the tenant. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Because there's no way that you can there's no way that you'll be able to prove mm -hmm. condition beforehand. Yeah, gotcha. absolutely. But also, the, the one thing to bear in mind from a landlord's point of view is that there could be a time lag. Even if the land, the agent manages to get that deposit back for you, which you know a good agent usually does, mm -hmm. it can take up to six months. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is, is, is generally what happens, um, the agent will log into the tenancy deposit scheme and saying, right, I think the deposit should be paid out this amount to the tenant, but this amount to the agent to right. cover the cost of the cleaning dilapidations, you know, ex excessive wear and tear and all these sorts of things. Right. But if a tenant says, well, I don't agree, mm -hmm. the undisputed amount, so any amount that they agree with will just get paid out straight away. Right. But the undisputed amount will sit in dispute. And it can sit, the way the time scales work is it can work out up to six months before you get that money wow. back. So it is, I mean, there is, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of incentive to try and, you know, get the landlord to have some kind of agreement with the tenant and meet part way. They because sometimes- They encourage that, don't yeah. they? To just pick up the phone and say to the tenant- oh, Come on, what you're, can you do here? You're, you're claiming for 300 here. Yeah. The tenant's only really accepting responsibility for 100. Can there be a middle ground where you meet gotcha. that's not mm -hmm. going to take this amount of time? Because it's a lot of hours for exactly. landlord, mm -hmm. agent and tenant mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. for an outcome that might just be a small amount. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. No, that's good yeah. way of looking at it. So it is important to kind mm -hmm. of think that through. But equally, the evidence needs to be robust enough to say, no, I'm sorry, this tenant has absolutely, uh -huh. you know, exactly. deserves yeah. to have that deducted. And um, But it is funny, you're talking about all these apps you can get these days. I remember one of my first inventories, um, it was about nine years ago, I um, uh, I actually did, I took all the photographs, I went to Boots, <laughs> got them printed <laughs> off, and I got the tenant to sign the back uh, of every that. single one of them. And can yeah, you imagine, with your portfolio Come of how on. many properties and like, you know 50 photographs for every single property yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so glad we don't do that anymore <laughs> I'll bet. oh my goodness but we got the deposit back <laughs> we got the deposit that's <laughs> amazing oh brilliant right so I'm a, I'm a the landlord investor I've got checked out with Mark I've brought in my personal stuff IDs and things mm -hmm. I've proved I've got I've brought the property with you with all these certificates mm -hmm. ticked off mm -hmm. magic so now inside the place mm -hmm. What am I thinking there, Mark? Do you, what's your well, thoughts and angles yeah. and rules around? What do you provide? You know, very, white goods, it's furnished, It's a very, unfurnished. very case by case mm -hmm. basis. This because it just depends on your property type. Right. I I, I think in general, think it's unfurnished is, is the way to go. If you're a developer, or if you're a um, if you're a if you're a developer, or if you're buy to let and you're developing a property to rent it out. We don't suggest to landlords or to put in any additional furniture. Right. 
uh, there's additional problems that comes with that, and wear and tear and things like that. But if you're just a landlord who comes to us and say, look, I'm moving in with my wife or I'm moving away, we've got loads of stuff in the property. Mm. Generally, we don't advise to them to take the, f the furniture o away if it, if it's good and it's if it can remain. We just oh, say right. just leave it. Okay. Always with houses, we will recommend that they are unfurnished because right. a lot of the time, three or four bedroom houses or whatever, the the tenants who are looking to move into that, they've got their own stuff. They've got their stuff. So yep. at the start, if it's furnished, we'll say to the owners, look it's best to remove this furniture this because cleared. what's going to happen is somebody will take it and then a month in they'll say well we've actually got our own bed in storage can you move this bed out and put in that so i i would go for if you're but if you're buying to let i would go for i would just keep it unfurnished unfurnished mm -hmm. right yeah. Any other what opinions? You think? No, I goals? think yeah, I, I think I agree with you though. Definitely yeah. case by case. Yeah. Definitely. Yes, one of those um, ones. The issue I have now with the PRT, this new private residential tenancy, where tenants can move in and move out quite quickly, yeah. is that sometimes you run the risk when it's unfurnished that somebody has sold a property looking to rent whilst mm -hmm. they then buy. Oh, so yes, and, yes. and then they kind of go, oh, it's an unfurnished property, great. I can move all my furniture in so I haven't got to pay for storage and I'm ready poised to go and buy the next property. And we had exactly this situation a couple Did of months you? ago where they literally gave their notice three weeks after moving in, having, you know, we said <laughs> to them- one day. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> true. that's true. And it wasn't any spiders. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> um, but, but yes, now now again, as Mark says, if there's already got furniture in, I say, yeah, let's, let's keep it because what's the point of spending money to take it out? Sure. But I would say definitely as one of my clients calls it skinny it down so yes, just yes. leave you know the essentials the two bedside tables bedside lamps mattress protector on the bed no bedding you know no, no pillows no cutlery, nothing hygiene related hands, nothing ideally like strip out the kitchen yeah. we're not quite like in borders uh -huh. we, we might we'll have properties we don't do many properties in the borders now but we'll have no white goods really because people do yep, rent for much much longer but certainly in edinburgh you have you have your white goods. Get the white goods yeah, in. they're right. always in. Okay. Um, but yeah, the, the less you have in the property, the less you have to maintain or replace if it breaks and things mm -hmm. like that. If you've got hoovers and those sorts of things, those all have to be pat tested. Yes. So again, it's ongoing that's, that's what cost I need to and think, things isn't like it? that. Yeah. If I provide yeah. something, it needs yeah. to work. It needs to be safe. Exactly. And, you know, it's, it's provided. But then equally, as that furniture starts to get a bit tired, you yeah. can say, do you know what? When we next let this property out, we're now going to go unfurnished, or we're going to go part furnished, and then we're going to go unfurnished yeah. because you no longer have the um, the wear and tear depreciation allowance for furnished properties. Yes. So there's less of a tax incentive, um, but equ and equally we find generally there's not much difference in rental valuation you get for furnished versus unfurnished. Yeah. But if you're buying a property, say, that is absolutely going to be a corporate let, no, or it's see, definitely going to be thing. a student net, yeah. then they will need furnish, furniture. Yeah. They don't need a huge amount, but mm -hmm. they would need furniture and need it presented in the right way because yeah. they're and not going to bring it in. It's expected, doesn't it? Yeah. This is the thing, yeah. that's so the customer. It depends on what your market is yeah. um, and what location you're in and what tenant you're going after and things like case that. So that's right. Goes back to story, exactly what you said. Yeah. And if the, your agent is that local expert, they know. Yeah. They know the area, they know the streets, Absolutely. they know the demographics, etc. They know the pros and cons. Totally. Any thoughts in Glasgow around the whole white goods provision? I would always, we always recommend putting in yep. white goods um, because a lot of the, and we do get pushbacks from, uh, sometimes from kind of first time landlords saying, no, we don't want to put in the, the washing machine or fridge freezer or whatever because we need to pat test them. Right. But the bottom line is the person who's coming to rent that property, they, they don't, they're taking it unfurnished, but they don't have they might not have the means, they might not have the inclination mm. to provide a washing machine for yeah. a, a property. So we'll always say, P just put them in. Get these basics. Get them mm -hmm. in. And yep. see, there's sometimes where the landlord will say, no, we'll just try it. And if they want one, we'll provide it. 99% mm -hmm. of the time. The they end up we'll, providing it anyway. Yeah, we'll mm -hmm. say, they'll say, well, we'll take the flat, mm -hmm. but we want a washing machine. So then you have to, then you go through the process of getting that organised for the tenant. So mm -hmm. put in the washing machine, Put in the fridge freezer mm -hmm. and that's it unfurnished right. or, or furnished okay i think it then makes it simpler as well i always yeah. say don't negotiate with terrorists yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> i'm not saying anything yeah. wait a minute i just want letting agents treat their tenants <laughs> 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 but what, what I would say is, is I think it's really important when you're presenting your property to the marketplace is being consistent with what you're presenting. Yep. Yes. And I think if you say, well, I could do a little bit of this and I, we could maybe do that and we could change that. I think that then sets a whole tone for the tenancy. Yep. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, and all the way through the tenancy, the, the tenant thinks, oh, well, there's maybe going to be give here and there's going to be give there. Whereas if you say, no, this is the property, yep. this is the rental amount, yep. we, you know, this is what it is, then everyone knows you know, what the playing code is. as well. 
We've right. had landlords come to us as well and say, this is how we were going to present it. And you're like, uh -huh. you need to put in blinds or uh -huh. you need to put in curtains or what? window coverings. Oh God, you don't want tenants to put their own up as well. Exactly. You know, oh, with the drill. Yeah. So yeah. it ended up... Right, blinds or curtains? Blinds oh, or curtains. Okay. Flooring. White, go um, white goods. Mm -hmm. If you're doing unfurnished, that's the minimum. That's mm -hmm. the bare basics. Light yeah. bulbs working and lovely and clean. Light bulbs. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Yeah. Simple, like it. simple things, yeah. but yeah. Keep it yeah. simple. Yeah. Yes, I mm -hmm. love it. Okay, okay. Uh, what's the thoughts and opinions around, so when it comes to things go wrong, you know, mm -hmm. boiler breaks, this happens, that happens. Uh, the landlord's having a relationship with the agent to manage these things, you know, putting in some kind of understanding, oh listen, if it's below this amount, mm -hmm. just take care of it, I don't well, care, take off the that's head. In our, What's the thoughts there? So Is that in a policy our standard, you've done with? In our standard yep. terms of business, yep. we've got an amount, it's, it's only it's £100, right. where we just go and do it. Yeah, just get it, it done. We don't need the landlord's permission. Yep. So somebody phones up and says, I've got a boiler breakdown, mm -hmm. we send out the heating engineer. Done. Simple. And if the heating engineer comes back and says, oh, by the way, the PCB's away and it's going to be £350 to replace, yeah. or that boiler's knackered, you need yeah. a new boiler, then after that, it's on his job sheet that anything that he can't go above £100. Gotcha. So gotcha. anything above that, we come back and we have a conversation with the landlord. If it right. can be fixed anything there, they'll just do it. Right. So it cuts down from keeping the landlord unnecessarily in the loop, saying exactly. there's been a boiler Every breakdown, time. there's been a breakdown, can we get somebody to get out and fix it? A yeah. day later you get a yes, Yeah. so we send somebody out to fix it and then it gets fixed, but it's really a day's extra downtime where yeah. it could have been fixed. Totally. So we set that at £100. Mm -hmm. Other places might do differently or or more or less. Mm -hmm. And some and landlords it. then say, actually, I've been with you a while and I trust you. Actually, can we put it up to £250? Yes, Because exactly. I know you're going to make a sensible decision. Yep. You know, sometimes a, a, t um, a contract is out and they say, look, I know we're going to go over the £100, but if I can just finish this job now and it's going to be 120 that's going to save me going back with Can't an extra 50 quid call out. And you're like, OK, this is yeah. what we've got yeah. to do here. Yeah. Um, but I always say to a landlord, I always want to check my landlords can afford to be a landlord. Right. I know that sounds crazy, but they need to have funds put aside, oh, you know, for breakdowns, yes. repairs, maintenance, well. de redecoration and things like that. And again, uh -huh. it depends on what they're, what they're aspiring to do with that property. But, yeah. you know, you need to allow the agents to get on with the job they're doing. And the agents shouldn't be made to feel bad because they've presented you with a problem and a solution at the same time. And Correct. yes, it's cost you money, mm -hmm. but they've actually presented you with a solution here. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and also they didn't cause it to break; it's just broken exactly. down. You know, and things like that. This. So yeah. I think it's, it's important that the you know it's also about building that relationship yeah. um, and that mutual respect yeah, um, totally. in, in, in the game. The way, the way as well that <coughs> we do things, I, I believe most agents will do it, is that we've got con. Um, terms with our contractors for 28 days payment. Mm. So if a, if a breakdown happens and there's an invoice to be paid, we'll add that to the landlord's account. Right. So when the rent comes in, uh -huh. we'll deduct that yeah. through the software, pay the contractor, then pay the landlord the lesser amount of rent because What's it's left. had our mm -hmm. fee off it, less the contractor's fee. Gotcha. So it's not like we're saying to the landlord when there's a £150 call out, yeah. can you pay this tomorrow so we can pay the contract. Mm -hmm. That's right, you're mm -hmm. chasing it, send this over, mm -hmm. I'm on holiday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah. if it is above and beyond like a boiler breakdown, yeah. then we'll ask for the payment in advance yep. so that it can be done mm -hmm. um, and we can pay the contractor because the rent of six or seven hundred pounds might not cover yep. the, mm -hmm. the cost of the new boiler installation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally. totally. What I would also say on that though is a landlord really should read their contract. Yes, we spend we spend an hour going through our, our leases with the tenants, but the number of times something comes up and the landlord's like, "Well, I didn't know about that." I said, "That yeah. is very clearly in clause yeah. whatever of your contract that we're yeah. going to do that. We are a business. You've engaged us as a business. Yep. Could you just read our terms of engagement? If you've got any questions, give us a shout." Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. it is that is probably a top tip. It's a very good point. <laughs> it's a very good point. So you're like just touching back on how do you choose an agent? Yeah. To find that out because when you're when you want to, when you want, if you want, to, if something goes wrong and you want to change agents down the line, mm -hmm. we've seen it before, mm -hmm. a lot of the corporates actually have exit clauses mm -hmm. which tie, uh, use the landlord in mm -hmm. to either paying, paying more, more fees mm -hmm. or a fixed amount to terminate their contract mm -hmm. with right. you. Mm -hmm. So even if their service hasn't been good or what you're looking for, there's an exit fee if regardless. 
So I would say read through that, yeah. make sure that there's no exit fee. If there is, get them to take it out. Yeah. We sign. have a we have a termination fee in yeah. our contract, um, and we we very upfront about it. We state mm -hmm. it very clearly, and we say we have a termination fee because, for example, if we've done nothing wrong, mm -hmm. and if you're yeah, you well, have, we find you the most amazing that. tenant, and your tenant wants to um, you think actually I can manage this myself or whatever it right. is, Oof. and you want to keep the tenant, Doink. then I'm so, we've we've done a huge amount of work, and yeah, as an agency, we generally don't probably earn any any particular profit on a property until at least six months into a tenancy mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. So we need to protect ourselves. We are a business at the end. Exactly. Of the day. We're not a charity. Everyone's there to make money, but we want our landlords to make money so that we stay in business. Yeah. But but I would always say to a landlord, I said, look, we've never had a, a landlord leave us for another agency. Mm -hmm. We've had landlords sell, fair enough. Yeah, of course. We've also had landlords sell with tenants in situ that mm -hmm. we've accommodated and everything else. Mm -hmm. But there has to. But obviously, if we had done something wrong, I would never hold someone to yeah, that okay. um, because it. I also know that with the first tier tribunal a landlord could take an agent to a tribunal and yes. I would want to avoid that at all costs thank exactly. god it's never happened but no we do have termination fees in our contract because mm -hmm. we're a business um, and I, that's why I say you must read this contract yeah. because this is what you're signing up to yeah. um, and in the same way that we, we spend an hour with every tenant and go through the lease Brilliant. clause by clause by clause with them right. I think it is really important so that they know. Yeah. it's oh, funny yeah. that the the, t the lease now because the way that we do it and I think most agencies do it is via an electronic platform right. called signable right so we send the lease in advance to the tenant mm -hmm. they sign it they come into the office we go through it and then right. we counter sign it ah, so, right, okay. Okay. so see when you're sitting down in front of the tenant mm -hmm. and they've signed this document yeah first question say have you read the lease <laughs> <laughs> well they say yes and yeah. it's they so obvious yes, they have it's so obvious <laughs> that it, it's yeah. not like I yeah. saw a poker face oh, coming back yeah. again because <laughs> you send it by a signable and literally they've signed it immediately two minutes yeah. later you're and like wow. you've not read no, that no. <laughs> the greatest speed reader it's, yeah. it's like yeah. a few weeks ago we had a tenant come to collect the keys right. from us and parked up outside and left the taxi running oh. and we're just like <laughs> This, this is going to take about half an hour here, so you you, you, you could call on a taxi from our office. Uh, and they hadn't read the lease either. Yeah. Wow. So it's, it's just amazing. like, they just sign up. No, yeah. Sign it, don't have a clue, yeah. get the key, and then... And then that's those are the tenancies where you have problems at the end because yeah. they don't realise what they've they signed up the to. Notice. And yeah. although it's their it's fault, stuff. you know, because, was it caveat emptor, you know, you need to be careful about what you're signing and everything. Mm -hmm. um, we find that when we go through the lease, I mean, we literally just the other day, a tenant said, I've signed so many leases in Edinburgh, I've never really understood what I've signed. Now I understand, no. understand and yeah. it makes sense. For the first time. Yeah, and I, by the way, I'm going to see you in six weeks, aren't I? I said, yes, because it's that uh, niggling, settling in you inspection. See, you know. See. So, yeah, and, but I find that makes a massive, massive difference. So you're advertising the property and you're saying, this is a property you're going to get at this price and this is how you're going to find it. Then you have the lease signing with them and saying, this is how the tenancy is going to run. This yeah. is how you report maintenance issues. This is how we're going to deal with them. And by the way, we're going to come in at six weeks. We come in at six weeks and you're building that trust because there's an awful lot of tenants out there who've had a bad experience. Mm. There's an awful lot of landlords who've had bad experience with agents so you're always working against an element of distrust yeah. um, because it hasn't got a great, great reputation our, our industry no. I think it's improving no, no, that, I know, um, that's right. but you are as an agency often fighting against um, preconceptions about yes. what you might be like and, and how you're going to try and take someone for all they've got you know as a tenant and things like that so yeah. I think there's an awful lot of education that happens along Very the way true. and that is part of that relationship mm -hmm. those relationships that you're having that seems to be at the center of everything mm -hmm. the relationship with the agent and the landlord the agent and the tenant it's, it's all there mm -hmm. and if you build it properly and you structure it properly and everybody understands then mm -hmm. it's going to be a nice relationship exactly yeah totally mm -hmm. brilliant listen i want to be respectful of your time uh, you've given so much there it's been fantastic i'm sure you've enjoyed watching that the the guys, the girls, they delved into so much there, absolutely brilliant. You probably rewind it a couple of times so you can hear everything that they covered. Uh, I'm sure you did enjoy it. If you're lucky enough that your place or your investor's place is going to be in Edinburgh, then go into the show notes and reach into the links that we've got there for Laura. If you're lucky enough you've got some places in Glasgow, then again, go into the show notes page from the podcast and hook into Mark. And if you're lucky then they'll have space to take you on and treat you properly, as you've heard. But for your time today, Laura, Mark, thank you very much indeed. Oh, Thanks, thank Richard. you, Richard. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hi, folks. It's Richard here again. I really hope that you enjoyed today's show. Now, listen, I've got two links to help support you on your property journey. And I want you to write these down when it's safe to do so. You might be driving in your car just now listening to the podcast, and that's fine. 
but please make sure that you get back to this and write down these links. Okay, are you ready? Got your pen in hand? So the first one, this week in property.com. Now that's the website for this podcast. On there, make sure you subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss out. What you can also do on there is catch up on tons and tons of past episodes. There are hours and hours of property related content and some amazing guests with some fantastic insights to help you on your property journey. So that is this week in property.com. Okay, next link propertyprotege.com. Now, let me spell that one out for you P R O P E R T Y P R O T E G E. That's propertyprotege.com. Now, what's it all about? Well, the Property Protégé Intensive is designed to give you the lift that you need into the world of property. And if you've already started, if you've already got some experience, then this can help you accelerate your progress even further. The experiences that people have had at Protégé and the success that they've achieved afterwards has been life-changing for many people. So go there right now if you're serious about property and if you want to build a highly successful property business. That's propertyprotege.com. So there you go. That's two links to some fantastic resources that are going to help you. And listen, talking about help, can you help me to help other people? You see, the more that we can share this podcast, then more people can learn from the fantastic guests that I've been so lucky to talk to. How can you help? Well, it's very simple and very quick. Just a short review on iTunes is going to help make that happen. If you go to thisweekinproperty.com forward slash iTunes, that will guide you to the very place that you will be able to help other people. So thank you. Thanks for doing that. And thanks for listening into the show. And I look forward to bringing another great guest to you in the next show.